good morning. How are you doing today? Welcome to Moon and Meditation and more. Just setting up the camera this morning. Sorry about that. Yikes. Okay. Great. Okay, great. Good morning. Welcome to Moon and Meditation and more. How are you guys doing today? a little bit early um, that I'm starting. Probably most of you are not going to be on here right now. <laughs> it's about 4.30 in the morning. Yes, it's exactly that. Um, I ended up waking up a little bit early. Um, you know, sometimes with um, the brain injury, um, like I had some activity or whatever like that, so I had a couple of strokes. Um, and those are some of the days that I, I wasn't able to actually post live. Um, our days that I was kind of managing um, my own kind of strokes in the morning. Uh, and that kind of um, is generally what happens when I first wake up. So a lot of people will wonder, um, you know, kind of what that looks like. And I think you can probably see a little bit of it right now. You'll see that like one side of my mouth moves or one side of my face um, and the other side doesn't. Uh, my mother will often ask me to smile. And as you can see, what like a smile looks like in the morning. Okay. Um, this whole actual left side of me actually is kind of slower to respond. Um, has some, currently, it has numbness and tingling in this arm and in the entire leg. Um, I woke up and I put some, um, I shower, you know, in the morning and I put some heat on the back and then I iced it and now I'm sitting again, um, with my back to the fire just so that I can get heat on it again, kind of while I'm like exercising and stuff like that. Um, I've actually oddly not been able to get my Western meds. For, I don't know, probably before Christmas. So I've been managing solely with um, medical marijuana. I even have, I have not even had my aromatherapy kit. So I've been solely doing it right now, managing the pain with um, meditation, yoga, and um, medical marijuana right now. Um, just because that's you know, the stage I'm at right now, which um, my aromatherapy kit is at my ex's house. Um, so I can't pick that up. <laughs> Not right now. Um, I'm kind of distant and far away right now. Uh, so um, generally what I'll do is if it's kind of been like that kind of a morning or whatever, I'll just try and kind of... Um, Take some gentle movements from left to right. Mm. And I just kind of like rock a little bit from side to side. You know, when um, things are that kind of challenging physically um, and people are, you know, you know, you'll go through like daily life and people won't mean to or maybe they do, I don't know. <laughs> but you can come across some what's called emotional triggers and that can impact you as well. Um, so I've had a bunch of them lately. Um, it's really hard, honestly, for me to interact um, profusely with people that are um, not in a good mind space. So if people you know, aren't really very calm and centered, it's kind of hard for me um, to work with them, kind of, um, or to metabolize it. Uh, so I do, unfortunately, um, with this injury, have noticed that I've unfortunately had to kind of isolate a little bit more and more by accident um, just during COVID, just because, you know, people are really stressed out and a lot of people are having a difficult time. Um, you know, a lot of times when that happens for me, 
um, which it currently is, as I told you before, I'm going through my own um, personal afflictions, for sure, absolutely. I mean, COVID is not going to let any of us out of this unscathed. <laughs> um, it's been uh, pretty crazy out there, you know, uh, pretty tough. But for a lot of people, um, and I think it's been really challenging, especially for those people that have disabilities or are elderly, um, you know, we're finding it like really difficult and challenging right now um, to some degree. In some degree, it's, it's helped out quite a bit. Um, so, I mean, you know, there's always like, you know, one side of the equation and the other side of the equation. Um, you'll notice something else, like my voice changes as my condition changes. So, as I've been able to like kind of move around, and wake up a little bit, like I'll notice that um, it's really strange, but slowly like this side will stop being frozen. It'll start like working a little bit or something like that at the same time as the other side, hopefully. I still have numbness and tingling in the shoulder. You know, so generally what I'll often do is just kind of rotate it as I just kind of gently go back and forth on my sit bones. For some reason, a lot of the times when I wake up, my sit bones and my neck and my back are all kind of pretty sore, pretty achy, pretty tired. I always have to do a full morning stretch before I even get out of bed. And I have to like you know, rotate my wrists a little bit and get some sensations into myself before I even attempt to try to like actually get out of the bed. So sometimes um, some of my yoga um, and breathing pranayama actually, t and my asanas, actually take place right in the bed when I first wake up. I'll do some of these kind of little stretches really early right in the bed and then I'll just kind of like reach up a little bit out of the sides in the bed and I'll point my toes I know you can't see that right now um but I'll generally like at the same time if I'm in the bed I'll point the opposite toe so if this arm is up and this is my right arm right now I'll actually point my left toe and get like a like a stretch kind of going across the body, if that makes sense. And I'll do it to the other side. So I'll point, I'll activate that side of the leg and I activate this arm. And I do it like when I'm on the floor. And we'll, we'll go over that later, right before Shavasana. So you get a nice full body stretch in and that kind of stretch from side this one arm to the alternating foot okay that'll be a nice good morning stretch then i'm gonna go into my waist i'm gonna exhale forward inhale backwards or actually i'm gonna inhale forwards exhale backwards sorry Inhale forwards. Exhale backwards. Two more times. Inhale forwards. You know, make this stretch as big or as small, as comfortable as it is for you. You know, keep in mind anything that you're kind of feeling, any sensation that starts to feel a little bit strong, go ahead and back off of that. You know, we're not here to be in pain. We're just here to get some motion in that area, okay? So I want, um, so it's really, um, I invite you actually, is what I should say. I invite you to really take these movements as slow as you possibly can and be luxurious to yourself. You know, a lot of the times we don't think of luxury as being something as time or taking the time slowly to do something. Um, but I invite you to think of that right now 
and to allow yourself the luxury of giving yourself the time to do something well and listen and go, even if you have to close your eyes and go inside your body, you know, I want you to go at your own pace. Yeah, the movement match your breath. As you feel good and ready, you know, try the opposite way. What we're gonna do to one side, um, I'm gonna try extremely hard to do the other side and not forget. Um, thank you for all being patient as I'm getting used to correspondence and all sorts of other things. I am a one man, one woman show, <laughs> as it were. So it's really tough for me um, to respond to everything. Um, as you guys know, um, or maybe you don't if you're just starting to tune in, uh, this is a watch live um, video that I started. And I started it in response to um, multiple brain injury and PTSD. That's the two conditions that I technically suffer from. And because I was suffering from them, uh, my first injury was when I was five years old. And I've had 10 severe traumatic brain injuries. And they've all been accidents. So none of them have actually been something that I knew was coming. Um, a lot of them, the majority of them are auto accidents. Unfortunately, the first one was a drunk driver hit my adoptive mother when I first came to the state. when I was first adopted. That was back in uh, 1974. I was adopted, yeah, and came over to the States in 1974, I should say. I was not um, just born, but I came over to the States at that time. Great, and as you feel ready, you just kind of study in the middle for yourself. Go ahead and put your hand on your heart and this hand on your solar plexus. And take a nice exhale. Get rid of all the stale air. Everything that doesn't serve you a positive purpose at this time. Get rid of all your worries, your fears, your anger, your jealousy. That wanton feeling of be feeling needy. Or desperate and get rid of all those feelings right now that are not serving you a good purpose at this time go ahead and exhale focusing on the exhale trying to get rid of all of the breath and letting the inhale come in naturally go ahead and take six more breaths that way If you want to, you can even pull the belly towards the spine to get rid of more stale air. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and lower your hands to your lap. Crown of your root, crown of your head is growing tall as your sit bones are grounded and going to the core of the earth. Imagine that your spine is neutral, that your pelvis is tucked in, and that there's no bend, there's no stress on your lower sciatica.
Great. Great. That's great. Okay. So we're going to try, um, I don't know if you guys remember this one. It's called um, Round Breath. <laughs> I want to say nine round breath because we do, um, we're going to do nine breaths, okay? And the way that it's going to kind of go is, now, you don't have to do this if you're really adept at it or really good at it. Um, you don't have to use your fingers. But for people that are starting out, you know, it's okay. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is we're going to exhale out the left nostril. Inhale into the right nostril. Exhale out of the left nostril. And when we do that, again, we're just making sure that we're focusing on the exhalation and letting the inhalation come in naturally. Okay, go ahead and start. Three more breaths. Last one. Go ahead and take this hand, put it on your heart, this hand on your solar plexus. Close your eyes and just notice where you are now. I just want you to notice the next three breaths. No judgment, no criticism, no controlling. Great. So in the next four breaths, I'm going to have you take your hands and put them like this. This thumb is going to go on your lower rib in the back. And these, this pinky right here is going to go on your lower rib, okay, in the front. And I'm just going to have you exhale. And notice what that exhalation feels like in your lower ribs, okay? So go ahead and take a moment now and take a breath in and notice your exhale. And when we say get rid of all of the stale air and bring your belly button to your spine to get rid of the excess air, go ahead and try that now. Go ahead and try that two more times, actually, okay? Great. 
Great. So I'm sure that you noticed where the breath was going. If your breath was shallow or if you attempted to lengthen it. And when you did, I'm sure you noticed um, probably some separation in the ribs where you actually felt some expansion in between the muscles. I'm gonna invite you to go ahead and try putting your hands up here this time. And in your mind in the next four breaths, I'm gonna have you remember what it felt like in the back of your lower ribs and in the front of your lower ribs and what it feels like now on the front at the top of your collarbone where the lungs are at the top, okay? So you're gonna, again, Take an inhalation and then notice your exhalation. Try to get at rid of everything. Bring your belly button to the spine. You're gonna take three more after that. Great. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take these hands. Hi everybody, and thank you for checking in. I love all your comments, by the way. Um, so I'm sorry, I uh, just wanna um, identify that people are kinda checking in. And it, I really enjoyed everybody checking in and saying hi and, and stuff like that. I actually had to get help from a friend to actually um, help get the website back to people in a timely manner. Um, Okay, so I'm going to take these hands and I'm going to put this back here. Okay, and we're going to notice the breath in the next four breaths, um, inhalation and exhalations. Um, and I'm going to have you take this hand, like before, and put the thumb on the lower rib. And I'm just going to have you notice in the next four breaths, exhalation and inhalation, what it feels like for your breath in your back of your lungs, okay, on your back. So our lungs go this way around us. And I'm just inviting you to see what that feels like to you. So go ahead and take an inhalation in and an exhalation. As you inhale, notice if there's any tension and go ahead and send the breath there. If your arms are bothering you, go ahead and lower them and put them in your lap. Okay, we're gonna do one more set of those. Excuse me. We're gonna do one more set of those. And this time I want you to close your eyes, go into yourself.
gonna go ahead and have you notice your next seven breaths. So we're gonna start on this pinky and end up on this finger. <laughs> and go ahead and just notice your next seven breaths. No judgment, no criticism, and no controlling the breath. Great, so now I'd like you to just invite you to put one hand on your heart, one hand on your solar plexus, close your eyes, and just notice how you feel now. How does it feel from when you just first started the breathing techniques and the pranayama, and the breath, attention, Okay, so now we're just gonna go into a little bit of movement. And we're gonna start up a little bit today. We're just gonna take this arm and breathe it all the way up. Take a nice breath and breathe this one. Inhale this arm all the way up. Have them meet in the center. Have them come here. And we'll just think in our heads, oh, may we have pure thoughts and no harmful thoughts for ourselves or anybody else. And we can think to ourselves, oh, I hope that we don't have any harmful speech or any intentions towards ourselves or anybody else. And here we can hope that and we can wish that we have no harmful intentions for our actions towards ourselves or anybody else. Mm. That would be nice. Great. So we're going to breathe this arm all the way up. We're going to take a nice side bend to the left. Now, if that's bothering you to have your arm up like this, you can go ahead and bend it, if that feels more comfortable. You can have it activated, which means that you can kind of stretch your fingers out like this. You can have them relaxed and go like that. Um, the idea is to have this arm over the ear in alignment and to rotate upwards so that you get a nice chest opener and a nice Stretch from here to here, okay? Both sit bones, you want to have grounded on the floor. And we're just gonna take a nice side stretch. Inhale it up, exhale your arm down, great. Go ahead and inhale the other arm up. Reach up, wiggle your fingers, your shoulder back in place. Go ahead and do your side bend, into your side bend. This arm is over this ear and you rotate your chest as well as it is comfortable for you. So you're gonna have that stretch go from this finger all the way down to this side and across here. Obviously, you want to just go
Go to where it's comfortable. Exhale the arm up. Inhale the arm up to the center. And exhale it down. Great. So in any pose or any stretch that we're doing today, um, I invite you to just, you know, if you're starting to feel it, that's great. But then just come a little bit off of that. We don't want you to get injured or overstretch anything or harm yourself in any way. We're just getting some movement into the area and some nice um, extension and expansion. So we're gonna go ahead again and breathe this arm up. Nice side bend. If you, I invite you to open your chest if that feels good to you. Excellent. And exhale the arm down. Inhale this arm up. You can reach up. Make sure your arm is back in place, shoulder blades in place. This is your next to the ear. And whatever the full expression is for yourself, go ahead and exhale that arm back down. Great, we're gonna take um, a nice gentle twist. Um, I'm gonna have you imagine that there's a string connected from your nose to your belly button and that you're only turning here in the waist, not the neck or the head. So I invite you to just turn from your waist even if that's not much, even if it's only this much, that's fine, okay? So you just take a nice gentle rotation. Inhale it to center. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale to the left. Inhale to center. Exhale. Inhale, exhale to the right. Inhale forward, exhale, inhale, exhale to the left. Ex inhale to the center. Exhale, inhale, great. I invite you to bring your knees if they were in crisscross applesauce and go ahead and bring them up, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take your left leg and put it flat down. We're gonna take the right leg by picking, interlacing your fingers, putting them under the knee lifting the knee up and putting the sole of the foot on the other side. We're gonna actually do that twist again, very gently to the right, by exhaling to the right, inhaling to the center. Exhaling to the right. Inhale to the center. Exhale to the right. Inhale to the center. Exhale to the right. Inhale to the center. We're gonna go ahead again and interlace your fingers. Put them underneath that knee. Pick the knee up. Put it on the other side of the leg. Go ahead and lower that knee. Pick this Interlace your fingers, pick the left knee up, bring it over to the other side of the leg. It should be on the outer side of the opposite leg. And again, we're imagining that the belly button has a string to the nose. We're gonna exhale it out, inhale it to center. Four times, two sets, great as you're ready. Exhale out, inhale to the center. 
exhale out, inhale to the center, exhale out, inhale to the center, exhale out, inhale to the center, exhale, inhale, and the next set, exhale, Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. We're again going to take these fingers, interlace them, put them underneath the knee, bring it back on the other side. Go ahead and put both legs out front, they're hip width apart. Your toes are pointing upwards, but also towards your face. Your hands are straight down by your side. Your back is neutral. The crown of the head growing tall. And the sit bones, we can remove the fleshy area from our sit bones and ground our sit bones. The hands are like this. Mound of the hand is off the ground, hands are activated by gripping with your fingertips and the heel of the hand is on the floor. But the mound is off the floor. The backs of your legs are, are touching the floor. If they're not, you can put a pillow underneath your knees for a modified prop position. Any amount of pillows that you need, that's fine. The stretch should actually be a little bit in the back of the legs, front of the legs. You know, it's funny. I think really the stretch is always going to go to where you kind of need it that day, honestly, and what's kind of going on with your body. So I invite you to really listen to your body and the tension that you have. Okay, go ahead and relax out of that pose by bringing the soles of your feet together, okay, like as such. And go ahead and kind of wiggle that out a little bit, okay? Butterfly that out, as we call it. And as you feel good and ready, go ahead and close them like a book. Great. Go ahead and put one leg down. And go ahead and take a nice gentle twist for the day whatever that expression is for you. Do it nice and slow with the breath. Inhale forward. Do three more of those. Exhale for your full expression of the twist. And inhale it forward two more times. And one more time. Great. Go ahead and extend that leg out. Bring the other leg in. And we're going to exhale, inhale out for the other side. Three more times. Sit bones are pointed towards, the hips are pointed towards your feet. Neutral position in your back. Crown of the head growing tall. Sit bones grounded. Go for one more. Great. Go ahead and lower that leg. Bring the soles of the feet together. Go ahead and shake that out. Take your right leg, close it over onto your left leg. Go ahead and bring your feet backwards. And we're gonna do a nice joint release here. We're gonna actually do some for the hands and for the toes at the same time. So what I'm gonna invite you to do is kind of put your toes on the ground and as you feel comfortable, 
go backwards towards sitting onto the heels. And as you're good and ready, go ahead and take a nice joint release by putting the backs of your hands on the floor and then going this way and stretching out your wrists. So I invite you to do those nice joint releases right now. And play around with it. You know, you can go from side to side, left to right. You can go around in little micro bends and micro circles. And you know, whatever feels good to you right now. I like to do some nice little, like, <laughs> circles, which kind of, like, helps a little bit. So I do some nice circles. You know, with all this typing and stuff like that and carpal tunnel and things like that, this is really good to do for that. So again, I'm going to just go and kind of work the wrists and go in the opposite direction. So whatever I do in one direction, I want to do the opposite. Okay. And I'm still getting that nice stretch back here by sitting back on my heels. Okay, while I do that. Go ahead and lower your feet down. Shake out your hands. Shake them up really high, bring them down really low. Turn, turn and shake, 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 shake. Try and shake now the whole arm, okay? Get rid of all that tension. Kind of like move your neck a little bit. Shake all that tension out. You know, wiggle it back and forth. Okay, great, great. Um, try and like go from this side. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna be kind of a moving one where we're gonna go over here like this, and then we're gonna exhale to the center, exhale over, exhale again to the center. So we're gonna focus on our exhale. We're gonna allow the inhale to come in naturally. But as you see, I go from one side to the center, take another breath, go to the opposite side, come back to center, I do a full another breath, Go to the other side again. Okay, so we're gonna do that four times, okay? I'm gonna start by going to my left. Great. And with each time, I mean, I invite you to go a little bit deeper if you like to. <laughs> and get some kind of C curves into the spine, which is kind of nice. Do it nice and slow. Uh, if you're feeling a little bit crinkly today and there's a lot of crispies and cracklies, then you might want to go a little bit slower with your movements and match them with your breath so that you don't get injured. Great. Okay, great. And we're gonna go for our first child's pose today. Um, so the modified version of that one is you can put a pillow underneath your legs and in between your legs and your sit bones. You can also go like this with your head on two fists. It could be on just basically one fist. You could do it this way okay? Or you can put your head just straight on the floor. You can have your hands up, but I invite you when you're doing that to make sure that your shoulders in the socket and your shoulder blades are meeting in the back when you reach up, okay? And that they're in alignment and that they're not too close together actually, but they're a little bit further apart. That you're kind of gripping the ground. That's that active of child pose. And what it would look like is actually this. Whoops. My little handy dandy case. Okay. So I'm going to move you over here just so you can see what a full expression of child's pose might look like. Okay. So if I were to do that, it would go all the way down. Now there's two. I can either be on, you know, I can, you know, Practice, if I still want to get that joint release in, I invite you to still do this. 
while you're bringing your arms up into child pose. Um, if you need more of a relaxed position, you know, you could actually have your, your um, knees farther out and even your feet farther out if you need it, okay? So that's fine. Like, they don't have to meet in the back. Like, I know if I were meeting in the back like this, but you could actually have your legs farther out like that, okay? Like this. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, good. So you can do, um, you know, either of those, and I'll show you what that kind of looks like now. Um, as we transition into child's pose, I'm just going to have you meet me for a couple of what's called cat and cows. So as we go in, we're just going to take a nice, Exhalation up, neutral, exhalation, inhalation, neutral, exhalation, inhalation. So your knees are underneath your hips. Your wrist crease is underneath your shoulder. You're not sagging down, but you're kind of keeping a neutral back. And the action is actually coming from your sit bones, and you're starting there. Um, I actually invite you to go the opposite way and try to start the movement with the head and see what that feels like. <laughs> you might be like, whoa. Okay, so go ahead and try that. But, um, you know, what we are uh, currently actively practicing right now is tucking the tailbone and then rounding the back slowly one vertebrae at a time, then sinking the belly down and kind of pushing up this way okay into the stretch so we're gonna go ahead and try four more of those before child's pose okay great so I exhale and inhale into neutral I'm gonna exhale and then inhale to neutral Exhale and round. Exhale to neutral. And exhale to lowering the belly. And then exhale to neutral. If you like to, right now, I mean, it's just fun sometimes. It's sometimes fun to just peek and take a corner look at your, at your, at your ankle. And then exhale and inhale to center. And then exhale and look at maybe your hip. Might be easier to look at your hip. Exhale and inhale to central. I mean to new, to center. <laughs> exhale to the right and look at your hip. Exhale to neutral. Exhale, look at your hip. Exhale to neutral. And then I invite you to go into your full expression of child's pose. You can rest here for seven breaths. and sit up. We're going to go back into tabletop and do a couple more, uh, four more cat and cows. So you're going to exhale now to the left. Inhale. Exhale to the center. Inhale. Exhale to the right, looking at the right hip. 
inhale, exhale and inhale to center, exhale and inhale looking at the left hip, exhale and inhale to center. And now what I'm going to invite you to do is actually go into your first cobra of the day by lowering yourself down. Your elbows are tracked in towards your body. Your feet are together and on the floor. You can point them if you want to. Your neck is neutral. And then I invite you to take the palms of your hand and make sure that your thumb is near your breastbone and that if you pick up your hands up off the floor, you're gonna go into your version of Cobra. And go ahead and release that, put your head on the floor. If you want to do the full release, you can put your hands down and turn your head and look in one direction. Go ahead and take four breaths there. Exhale your head to center. Take four breaths. On your last breath, you're going to alternate whatever hand was on top. And go ahead and look in the opposite direction and take four breaths there. I'm going to invite you to bring your um, hands back to the breastbone, your elbows towards your body, tracking to be against your body. You're going to actually push up and backwards into plank. If your expression of plank, um, your hands, the hip creases are under your shoulders. If you're in a modified version, your knees are on the floor. If not, it's fine to pick them up. Just make sure that your neck is neutral and your spine is neutral. You're gonna go ahead and exhale your right foot forward into a lunge. Go ahead and take four breaths in a runner's lunge. Go ahead and exhale that foot back into downward dog. It's your first dog of the day. So go ahead and pedal that dog out. Then take another three breaths. On your third breath, go ahead and bring that left foot forward or the opposite foot into a runner's lunge. And hold that for four breaths. We're gonna go ahead and put that back foot down, but have that back foot and the front foot. The front foot, the heel is gonna be in the middle of that back foot, if that makes sense. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this arm, exhale it up as we go into our first warrior. This area is neutral. Your back is neutral. Your arms are shoulder height. Your hands are outstretched and active. We're gonna go ahead and have the palms are facing towards the floor right now. We're gonna have the outstretched hand that's in front of our face, okay? the outstretched hand that's in front of our face. We're gonna flip it over and have the palm facing up. We're gonna go into what's called peaceful warrior by raising that hand up 
and lowering this hand down just because it's just resting. This one is active, this one is active. Our spine is neutral, our neck. We can even go into a nice full expression and a nice stretch if we want to. If not, we can stay right here. If that's difficult, you can keep your hands outstretched again and go back into powerful warrior, warrior one. We're gonna go back into this peaceful warrior on the exhale. And we'll come back out of it again. We're gonna just do this nice moving warrior two more times. Exhale it up. Inhale it back down. Exhale it up. Inhale it back down. Great. We're gonna straighten this front leg. We're gonna tilt forward a little bit and we're gonna go into our expression of star. Wiggle that hand up there and imagine that someone's pulling this hand that's up here towards the sky, okay? So there's not a lot of weight in this hand, okay? The stretch you're feeling is probably gonna be in here and across here. We're gonna go ahead and exhale the knee, bend back into warrior. We're gonna rotate this foot out and point this foot and have the heel of the opposite foot be in the center of this foot for alignment. And now our warrior is looking in the opposite direction. We're gonna go ahead and exhale that arm up into Peaceful Warrior. Inhale it back down. And do that again three more times for a moving warrior. Exhale it up. Inhale it down. Exhale it up. Inhale it down. Go at your own pace, at your own speed, and at your own comfort level. Exhale it up, inhale it down. Whatever modifications that you need. Um, your alignment should be that your this knee should not go past your ankle or the big toe, if that makes sense. You should be able to see your big toe, okay? These are shoulder height. If not, it's okay just to, you know, use the one arm. That's fine as a modification if that's bothering you. We're gonna go ahead and put both feet facing forward, arms outstretched, and we're gonna go into a half lift. Uh, we're gonna have the sit bones um, tracking in opposite direction. And then we're gonna go down, bend the knee, put a micro bend in the knees a little bit, and go down for a forward fold. If you want to, you can even bend the knees further, reach your arms through, and get a nice stretch in between the shoulder blades. For those of you that have a lot of tension in between your shoulder blades, just make sure that your neck is loose and that you're not holding any tension in your neck during this stretch. You can come out of that active stretch and just kind of, you know, go ahead and Hold your opposite arms and let your head go. And you, know, you can even just go from side to side and get some movement into your waist if you want to. Go ahead and have you guys roll your vertebrae up one vertebrae at a time until you're in a standing position. Go ahead and roll those shoulders. Bring your feet in a little bit more just so that it's a little bit more comfortable for you. But go ahead and take some nice shoulder rolls. Get some movement in those arms and see if you can get it faster. Opposite way. We're gonna windmill those arms out. Go for it, come on. Now shake it out, shake them all out. Shake, 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 shake. Good. Okay, if you need to kind of roll your ankles a little bit now, go ahead and do that. 
<clears throat> okay. Go ahead and have you step forward. You're gonna go ahead and go down on the left side of the foot. You're gonna lower your knee. You're gonna flatten the top of your foot down. And you're gonna go into your first pigeon of the day, whatever that expression is for you. You know, it could look like this. It can look like this, but it can look like this. Now the full expression obviously is if you take this, it's at a 90 degree angle, and then you reach back and you grab your foot. That's the full expression of pigeon. Um, so whatever, whatever is comfortable for you today, and go into your pigeon and then go ahead and lay your head down. And go ahead and come back out of your pigeon. Inhale and exhale two more times. Focusing on the exhalation, get all the stale air out and let the breath come in naturally. One more time. Okay, great. So we're gonna actually bring the other foot forward, other knee forward. We're gonna sit on the knees for just a second. And we're just gonna take a couple of breaths right now. Closing our eyes, going into ourselves. And we're gonna go ahead and put our hands down. We're gonna bring our opposite knee forward while sliding the other leg back. And then you can either bring your leg up for your full expression of pigeon or anywhere in between that's comfortable for you really. We're gonna go ahead and lower our head. And when we do that, it doesn't have to come all the way to the floor. If you need to, you can do this, you can do this, or you can do this, okay? So go ahead and lower down. Take two more breaths here. Go ahead and rise up out of your pigeon. Take a couple more breaths here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and have you bring the other knee forward again. Sit back on your heels. Crown of the head growing tall. Spine is neutral, sit bones are grounded. Hands are face down at your hip crease. Shoulders are back and down. Shoulder blades are in place. Crown of the head is growing tall. Go ahead and take your right knee forward, left leg back or opposite leg of whatever you were doing before and go into another expression of cobra. So, you know, the full expression is this, or you could go like that. Or you can be holding as this, too. We're gonna go ahead and go down for the relaxation part of the cobra. So you can either have your hands, you know, this way, this way, or not at all. <laughs> Um, another version also, too, is if to do this. And then alternate the way that you grab your hands. Great. 
We're gonna slide this foot forward or this knee forward. Go ahead and sit back. Sit bones grounded. Crown of the head rising tall. Neutral back, neutral spine, neutral neck. Hands palm down at the hip crease. Take a few breaths. Notice where you are. Okay, we're gonna go to the other side. We're gonna move this leg forward, this one back. And we're going into Cobra. Whatever that Cobra is for you today, no worries, no judgment, no criticism. If you're high up off the ground, that is okay. If it hurts, put some pillows underneath you, okay? Put your, some pillows underneath here so that you're almost like resting on top of it, if that makes sense. Or just pull in to here, these two muscles, and that will give you more integrity in the pose and prevent you from overstretching or harming, if that makes sense. Go ahead and go down into the relax, relaxation part. You're a resting pigeon. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and as you become ready, come out of that pose, sit back on your heels. We're gonna actually sit on one side, swing the legs out in front of us. We're gonna go down for a forward fold. Now, if um, that's not comfortable for you, you can put pillows underneath your knees. You can put a pillow between your stomach and here. The idea of it is to just, this time is to actually not round your back, but your back back here is flat, okay? And the stretch is actually supposed to be felt back here, okay? So that's that's the stretch we're asking you to actually feel. So whatever you gotta do, if you have to like remove the flesh from your sit bones kind of and ground your sit bones more, you might have to. If you need to put some pillows here or here, that's fine. Um, but the idea is to feel that stretch from the Achilles all the way up the back of the leg. Okay, great. So sometimes like I won't even reach outwards out to keep the integrity of the pose Sometimes I'll have people do this and point their feet towards their face, the big toes. And that way they know if their lower back is neutral, if the upper back is neutral. Because sometimes when you go like this, you're round. And so what I, sometimes I'll have people do is kind of put their thumbs t more towards the center of their spine and, and only move from the hip crease into the forward fold. You know, getting really far down to your toes is not the goal. The goal is to just feel this stretch running back here. And here's the thing, if you overstretch that area, you might injure yourself. So let's just put the soles of our feet together and let's butterfly it out. Okay? <laughs> awesome sauce. <laughs> Excellent, okay. All right, that's a thing I say. I'm trying not to say it <laughs> as much. Uh, okay, great, 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 great. So sometimes I even have people um, at this point brace their elbows onto their knees and rock on their sit bones. A lot of the times we don't get a lot of, well, massaging to our sit bones, <laughs> right? Um, however, we do sit quite a bit. So what I invite people to do is do this self-massage technique. We're going to go in the opposite direction. What is that? Okay, wait. We were going this way. So I have to go in the opposite. Uh, I have to go in the opposite direction. <laughs> have fun with it, okay? This is a playful time right now. You are massaging yourself. And close your eyes. Go into yourself 
Feel where it's sore as you're rotating and breathing. You're going to feel it. You're going to be like, whoa. Oh my God, my gosh. <laughs> what is that? Yes, sir. -y. Okay. Nice. You know what's really kind of cool about this, this one is that you also get, which I like to do a lot, these hip crisses and hip folds, they um, are anti-aging yoga poses. Super fun. <laughs> so we really like them a lot. So getting some movement into that waist, you know, get, try to really kind of get all those crispies and the cracklies out. Now, what's really nice is you can actually interlace your fingers and put your head down and get a nice stretch across the chest and in between the shoulder blades as well. I invite you to like pull down almost and get a nice stretch in your neck as well. The head has no pressure on the floor. It's just there so you don't tip over um, from left to right. Really, the active part of this is like almost pulling away from your neck, okay? So what's really nice is you're getting that nice stretch, that elongation in the back of the neck. If your hands don't meet in the back, don't forget to use that prop. Um, I don't know if you were at the episode where we used a sock to grab behind us. Um, or you could use any piece of fabric. You could use like a glove. But the concept is, is You'll grab one end of it and grab the other end of it and it gives you some more like extension in between your hands. So if your hands don't meet in the back, um, grab any kind of fabric and just kind of, you know, even if it's like your sweater, you could take your, you could take your sweater off and just like use it in the back and it stretches, okay? So um, we're gonna go down for three more of those, okay? So if you add your fingers, interlace, interlace them in the opposite direction, okay? So maybe they were this way before, do them in this way now, okay? Um, and you can either press out this way or you can have them closed. It's up to you, whatever is comfortable. Some people even like to point them. <laughs> so it's really whatever hand mudra you feel comfortable with or hand motion that you feel comfortable with, go for it. Okay, outstanding. We're going to go into the pose now. Exhale it up. And go back down one more time. And we'll stay there for a couple of breaths. I like to play around with mine um, to go like left to right with micro movements and a little bit up and down, but the movements are so tiny. So, you know, I invite you to experiment with that and we'll go down one more time for this and you can experiment with what I call micro movements. I'm just going to put a log on the fire while you guys are doing that. It's getting chilly in here. Okay, great. We're gonna sit back down on our heels and we're actually gonna rotate our legs out and we're gonna lay down in final relaxation or what's called corpse pose or shavasana. And what that looks like is you can roll down one vertebrae at a time. Now for those people that have a hard time getting all the way to the floor as I call it, 
Um, I call it doing it in stages, okay? So there's another way that you can do this if you have an injury. And see how my legs are kind of bent and staggered? I invite people to walk themselves down to their elbows and then reach out, put their ear on the floor like this, and then roll over to their back. So those people that are currently having back injuries or they have an issue where sometimes their back seizes, I have people also get up the same way, okay? So if that's something that's happening for you right now, or let's say you have any neck or back injuries and you can't just automatically roll backwards, I invite you to try this method. Okay, great. So we're eventually going to go down for Shavasana. And depending on, you know, what kind of a person you are, you can either, you know, get down there whichever way is easiest. But for those of you that are working with injuries, you know, this is, you know, this kind of like squinching down a little bit at a time and then just kind of like going down slowly and then rolling onto your back is sometimes really... And having the knees bent when you actually roll onto the back, okay? Not having them outstretched, but having them bent. And then once you're on your back, slowly extending your feet. Now, if you know that you cannot lay on the floor with your feet all the way down, then I invite you, before we go into this pose, to get pillows. One pillow for each leg. If you need two pillows, then two pillows for each leg, okay? Because your legs are going to be more than hip width apart. So if the pillow is too small and then you spread your legs more than hip width apart, you lose the pillow for the prop. So I invite you to either take a blanket and roll it up really thick right now and put it under your legs or get two pillows or four, depending on how high it needs to be. You can also have a neck pillow. Um, I know a lot of you are dealing with injuries and discomforts. So, you know, you can do that for Shavasana and corpse pose. Um, the intention here is to be focused on the breath. Okay? So you don't want to be sleeping or napping. You do want to be fully aware of your breath and being able to pay attention to where it's going in your body, the temperature, the speed quality and if it helps you um i often will tell people oh count from one to ten ten to one one to ten and do that uh five times okay if that helps you uh focus okay great so we're gonna go ahead and go into final relaxation okay great see you there Go ahead and roll down into it. Close your eyes. If you've gotten an eye pillow at this time, um, that's outstanding. That's great. I'm glad that you caught it. And I'm just going to go uh, get the text that we're going to go over today from the Heart of Yoga. So lately we've been going over the heart of yoga and we've been also doing um, sailing, setting intentions. So while you're in Shavasana and you are um, slowly counting your breaths, uh, once you are done, I'll give you a moment to finish up.
So we'll just go over a little bit again about yoga. I'm gonna backtrack a little bit for those people who um, might have not have been in some of the other live watches. Um, when we're talking about yoga, there's a lot of paths. Um, in addition to classic yoga, there's like Raha yoga, Karma yoga, Bhakti. Um, I think there's one called Nyanan. I, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Tantric, Buddhism, Hinduism, shamanism. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, have curiosity about, you know, what that means really. And, and really what, what yoga does is it leads you to complete the embodiment of virtues, strength, balance, serenity, peace, joy, happiness, con contentment, and wisdom, which is which is something referred to as um, samdhi, okay? Um, and really what it does is it separates us the cause of suffering and union and it creates more freedom. Um, yoga really creates union. And the goal of authentic yoga generally is to create a state of harmony, balance, and union on the physical, mental, and spiritual level. When we have separation from ourself or each other or nature and from something greater, like a universal consciousness, the source, a God, whatever term you want to use, um, that will generally cause anxiety and chaos that is symptomatic. And a lot of us find that difficult to experience a natural connection with each other when we don't have the connection with our own self if that makes sense. So what yoga kind of does is it connects us with our inner wisdom in which there is no doubt as to the connection of all things. Okay? So, for instance, like vinyasa, krama, would be movement and sequence. That would be its method methodology. Okay? So that's a nice example. Okay? And, you know, that's, um, if you've noticed a lot of what I'm doing, is I'm matching the movement with the breath, okay? Which is commonly referred to as what's called vinyasa krama, okay? Um, vinyasa means order placement, and krama means um, uninterrupted sequence of events from beginning to end. So it means um, the order placement of this sequence of events. Okay, and it refers to um, a sequence of asanas that are linked by breath and intention, progressing towards a specific goal. The breath connected with vinyasa moves each pose dynamically, and it's followed by stillness after the next one. Okay, great. So we went over a little bit of that, and I believe that we went over a little bit about, um, you know, the lineage itself, okay? So the lineage itself um, is Krishnamacharya, is the source teacher of the lineage um, that I have followed and that I've studied in, and it's an integrated holistic approach. It's typically called royal yoga, and it's considered the path between meditation and all other branches and practices. What it does is it, um, it prepares or supports the central practice, if that makes sense, and generally is referred back to, to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, which is the sacred ancient text specialized in the philosophy of yoga. Um, we're exploring the paths of yoga. Um, the one that I'm from is called Eight-Limbed Yoga. And the basics are Yama and Niyama. And there are um, five eras of yoga history. I want to say yoga is probably like, oh golly, maybe over like 5,000 years old, right? And... Um, it started, I 
think when we discovered fire like two million years ago. But there are five eras of yogic history. It's archaic, pre-classical, classical, post-classical, post and modern. Modern yoga started in 1760, by the way. <laughs> so when we say modern, <laughs> that's 1760. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay. All right, well, that covers a little bit of that today. Um, go ahead and get some, let's see. I think the last question that we went over from Heart of Yoga, we were on the last one. Let's see, last couple of them on this page, okay. Which we could go over uh, next time since we've gone over so much today. But I will leave you with this lovely little sutra, which is kind of fun, uh, which I think you might like. Let me see if I can find it. I got it the other day and I was really kind of excited about it. When you're inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bounds. Your mind transcends limitations. Your consciousness expands in every direction and you find yourself in a new, great and wonderful world. Dormant forces, faculties and talents become alive and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. Mm. I hope you enjoyed today. And I wanna thank you very much for coming and for participating and for watching. Oh, I feel very humbled by your presence and thank you so much. I'm glad that other people enjoyed this subject as much as I do. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, I am gonna make my website a little bit more clear. I apologize. I keep apologizing for that website. Oh, I am not a techie guru completely. Um, I used to be and my disabilities have slowly wicked that away. <laughs> apparently <laughs> I would have in the past had this website up so much faster I have to say so it's been really interesting migration for me um, and a labor of love I gotta say but I want to thank you all for tuning in and I hope you have a fantastic hump day in the middle of the week thank you all that's going on in the world. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I hope this brings you to a better place. I hope that this helps bring some expansion into your lungs, some more oxygen to your brain and helps you with COVID, combat COVID. I know that they've reduced the amount of oxygen in some of the hospitals um, just because they're apparently running out. So good luck with your practices, everybody. And I hope you stay COVID safe and safe from all harmful things. And may you receive many blessings. Take care.